looking at the top of the hour. Um, so welcome everyone to the Assurity webinar on, on RPA. And we have the great pleasure of having our RPA um, vendor partner, UiPath, that is joining us for today. Um, so it'll be a, a good joint conversation that we will be having. My name is Michelle Caminos, and I am the Strategic Business Development Manager and Executive Advisor here at Assurity. I have recently just joined Assurity over the past few months, earlier this year from Gartner, where I spent many years as a managing VP, working in various areas of research and advisory there. I'd like to start off with just a few housekeeping items, everyone. Um, first of all, we are recording this session. For those that wanted to attend and were not able to, um, we'll be able to share it. But also for those of you here, if you do want to reference back and um, re-listen or share the particular webinar with any of your colleagues, it will be provided to you shortly after this event. The other thing I'd like to also bring to highlight to everybody is we will be taking questions throughout the session. We'll be having a few breaks here and there. And there is a place here in the chat part of Zoom that you would be able to provide your questions. We will be opening up the, the floor for any live questions if you wanna ask them yourself. Or you can also post the questions in the chat and I will be asking that of our speakers here today after they've had a chance to share their particular insights and, and knowledge. So what I'd like to do now is just introduce our speakers, both uh, Brendan from Assurity and Barath from UiPath. I'll ask Brendan to just introduce himself first, and then I'll ask Barath if you could follow after Brendan. Brendan? Thank you, Michelle, and good morning, everyone. Um, as Michelle mentioned, I'm Brendan Shea, and I look after the, both the business optimization and the employee growth um, value streams here at Assurity, um, with RPA being a specialist knowledge area of mine, um, having done this for many years um, in other organizations. So looking forward to chatting to you more shortly. Thanks, thanks, Brendan. Hi, team. This is Bharat Kanapati. I'm, uh, I'm from UiPath. I manage uh, business uh, and relationships in New Zealand for the UiPath and uh, collaborate with Assurity to bring the UiPath automation platform across um, the customer base in New Zealand. And looking forward to interacting with you today. Thanks. Thanks, Brenda and Barath. And please, everyone, if, if you wouldn't mind, uh, before we open up the floor for questions, if you can just put yourself on mute so there's no background noise. I know here in Auckland, we're still in extended lockdown. So um, there could be various uh, activities happening around us in our, in our homes. So today we're going to be having a session on robotic process automation, RPA, something that's been around for some time now, but it's really getting a renewed focus as a result of the cost pressures, the tight labor market that everyone is facing, and also the requirements of really trying to drive stronger customer engagement and experiences. And where we often find that RPA is fitting is in this bigger discussion of hyper automation. What we're finding is that through our conversations and discussions with various companies out in the industry, that they're dealing with a lot of collective debt, both in technology and in their architecture and data. Um, and as a result, trying to figure out how can they deliver better experiences to customers and to their employees at speed, which RPA is actually a component of that. So that's the aim for today's session is that we will be giving an overview. Brendan will be talking about where to start and then how to carry on the RPA or automation journey at scale, where a lot of businesses that we're talking to may have a few bots already in place and feel as though, well, we're somewhat done here when actually thousands can help benefit your organization and supporting businesses from end to end. And so Barath will be, or, um, uh, Brendan will be talking about some of the best practices and the companies and experiences that we've seen from a surety perspective. And then Barath will be talking about the UI um, path platform and where the differentiators are vis-a-vis -vis the competition out in the industry and how it can actually help set up your business and future-proof your automation journey as, as you move forward. 
Now, one thing that we want to do throughout this um, session is to do a poll. We want to see where people are and where you are on your RPA journey. So we're going to start off with one question here. If you could bring that up, Cass, please. And the first question is, where are you currently on your RPA journey? Are you exploring the idea? Are you committed but have not yet started? Are you starting it but still early days? Have you implemented it but only on a small basis? Or have you been able to really, from your perspective, bring it to scale? We'll give everyone here about 15, 20 seconds and you can use your mouse and just click on the response that best um, aligns to where you are in your business and the RPA journey. We'll be able to see where everybody falls and just some comparisons out in the industry where you may sit vis-a-vis -vis the other business out, businesses out there. Okay, Cass, do you want to share the responses there and we can have a look? Fantastic. Okay, so about half of those of you that are on this call are exploring the idea. Um, only 7% are saying that you're looking at committed to doing, just haven't started. And approximately 43% have started their RPA journey. So about half and half between you started it and exploring the idea. Brendan and Brass, do you have any comments to what we're seeing here? Yeah, hi, Michelle, it's Brendan here. So a couple of comments. The first would be that, um, so we ran this poll with another webinar we did about a year ago. And so what, what we saw back then was a lot of people early on and exploring and committed. So it's actually interested that a, a few, few more have actually moved on to the early phases, which was great. Um, but the other point is that um, the numbers are still the same in terms of a large amount of RPA solutions. You've got people who've moved to the middle of the bell curve, but haven't quite gone to the, uh, gone to the end yet. So that would be my observations. Brett, do you have anything you want to add? Yeah, just, just one point. So I can say 50% right exploring the idea, which means this, that there's massive opportunity for both of us to, you know, um, go and, you know, help them, right, in, in uh, accomplishing what they need to do. Fantastic. And we'll have a couple more of these questions um, here throughout throughout our session here. Um, so what we'll do is I'll hand it over to Brendan, who will be able to share some of the insights that we've been seeing here at Assurity with our with the work that we've been doing from an RPA perspective. Brendan, over to you. Thanks, Michelle. Um, so good morning, everyone, again. So today I'll be running through a few basic concepts about RPA. Notably, why would you automate, how to get started, and once you're up and going, how to avoid failure and ensure ongoing success. It's a pretty quick tour today. So if you have any questions, please drop them in the chat, as Michelle mentioned, and we can answer them at the end and as we go through. Now, a quick comment about the levels of, levels of capability in our audience today. As you saw from that graph, uh, some people will know lots and have a mature program, or well, some people did, and most will be just starting off. But for the purposes of today, we're going to assume you know a little, but not everything. So if you're here today and your RPA program is mature, for those small amount who were, I'm confident that there are some nuggets in here today that you can actually learn from. So most of you will already have a good understanding of what RPA is. It's technology that allows us to scale highly defined and repeatable processes using some pretty smart technology. And Barath will talk to you about the specifics of that technology after me. But some of you may be wondering though, just why would you automate some processes? We do it for a number of reasons, but most fall into the following categories. And I'm going to share my screen here so we can actually start to move through. Right. <clears throat> Let me go one second. So the first reason is generally the most popular and it's about an organization's ability to scale their workforce. We can do more with the same resources or more for less. Using automation also means consistent quality for our customers. When you automate things, there is a natural level of quality built in as the bot is following instructions 100% of the time. Humans on the, other, on the other hand, despite all we're capable of, find it difficult to do things 100% right 
100% of the time. Um, and for those who do things manually, we know just how hard it is to actually do that. Cost is also a driver because clearly if you're doing more with automation, then you don't need to keep hiring people. So you can keep your costs down or you can do more for less. Some customers use it as a mechanism um, to keep costs down, to specifically keep costs down. Uh, for example, at a team I led in another organization, we were able to remove 68 roles because we automated one end-to-end -end process. That's actually quite a big number. And as I mentioned before, humans can't get it right 100% of the time, all the time. Um, but some organizations absolutely need it too. Um, so that becomes a big driver. When your teams are especially legally obliged to get it right, um, this becomes a major driver. And at the moment, as you can all appreciate, um, a big concern for most companies in New Zealand is retaining the talented people. Um, one of the easiest way to do that though, is to remove the um, monotonous and repeatable activity and make their job more enjoyable by allowing them to focus on the more interesting work. Um, so therefore it's a great advantage in how we retain our people. Um, I mentioned before that uh, the 68 roles were removed in another organization. Um, and that's a big number and it's a scary number. Um, but guess what? Those staff are actually really happy because they work as they work for an offshore provider, they're actually move on to more able to move on to more interesting work. And by removing this work they did, actually didn't mean removing their jobs at all anyway. So these days automation is possible across all industries and all parts of the organization. And it's actually all around you and you probably don't even see it. So what I wanted to do was show you a very short video where you can see automation in action in a context that you might not have thought of before. So, um, hang on. so that young lady screaming was pretty impressive, wasn't it? Um, that will be us in Auckland in a few weeks when the restaurants, bars and cafes open again. Um, but apart from reminiscing about what going to an actual live event looks like and what it feels like because it's been such a long time, um, but uh, it showed us an alternative way that automation can actually deliver results. Um, for those that don't know, Ed Sheeran uh, uses automation to help him deliver his, deliver his concert experience um, as he uses a device called a loop pedal. So that allows you to create an instant recording and play it back in real time. In effect, it's done exactly the same way that we would automate processes, record the process and play it back on demand when you need it. Now you may be thinking, that's a silly example to use. Um, but if we go back to this original slide we brought up in terms of why the reasons you'd automate, can see that actually Ed ticks off a lot of the boxes. So he's able to scale what he does. Uh, the audience satisfaction is much higher because he does it all. Um, he certainly lowers costs because he doesn't need to pay for a band. Um, less people playing in his band means that less risk because um, a string's not gonna break or a drumstick's not gonna break. Um, and Ed's far happier because he gets to make that experience about him. And you know, with the accountant hat on, he doesn't need to pay anyone. So uh, gets more of the profits for himself. Uh, so slightly tongue-in-cheek view, uh, you can see it, uh, there's some uh, similarities between how we automate process organizations and how he does that. But let's bring it back to a work context where unfortunately I'm and we're not Ed Sheeran, uh, but we need to improve the efficiency of how we manage our business. Um, so we're keen to understand and we're keen to get started, but what are we doing? So RPA, like, um, like other most other transformation initiatives, initiatives, it's a simple matter of crawl, walk and run. But there's a method around how you do this and we call this the assurity four-step process. A good question and a frequent one is, well, where do you start? Um, start by looking at areas of the business with good stable process, with high handling and rules-based logic. 
but which demand manual oversight. You'll need access to um, data in a stable and a reliable way, and reliable systems are key here, and the, and the involvement of the key people who do all the work for you. Um, <clears throat> There's a saying we use, so give me access to the fifth best person who knows a process, and I'll give you the fifth best bot. That's how important people are to this process. There might be a few obvious potential candidates for automation using robots, but the reality is it's difficult to pinpoint exactly where, what are the processes early on that are best suited. And it always starts with great business process analysis, taking a detailed look at your processes, um, because as you can understand on the face of it, what may look simple may not turn out to be quite so simple once you look under the hood. Um, once you actually, like any good program, you need to create also a repeatable cycle about how you take the ideas, um, convert them into opportunities, deliver the value and demonstrate that value back to the organization. The more consistent and repeatable that process is, the better the results will be. And the obvious point is you can't actually automate anything unless you have um, great software um, that enables that. And Barat will be talking about that shortly. <clears throat> People often think that automation is all just about the technology. But in reality, your processes and also your people are just as important as that technology. The key people know how things work and they need to be with you as you automate the work that they do and you do. <clears throat> in terms of how to avoid failure, um, by doing the things I discussed on the previous slide, uh, we mitigate most of these. However, one of the biggest things holding back the power of automation is the ability to scale a program, as Michelle mentioned at the start. If we come back to the Ed Sheeran analogy, um, we don't want Ed playing one concert a year. We want Ed playing hundreds of concerts every single night. The power of automation is best unleashed when you do it at scale. <clears throat> there are a number of ways to do this, um, but for me and for us here at Assurity, there are three critical enablers. The first is um, create some aspirational targets around what, what you want your program to deliver for you. And they may be, for example, around customer experience, for example, a 25-point increase in customer set measures, 50% um, reduction in complaints, 10% um, reduction in churn, for example, of some of your key people. Um, and of course, the obvious one where a lot of people go to to begin with is the one of cost, uh, uh, either your revenue, either cost in or, or revenue, cost out or revenue. And that's specific to you. But in the last organization I worked in, uh, when we put RPA in, we were able to um, deliver just shy of $20 million worth of value in just under two years. So as you can appreciate, that's an impressive number. Just a note, though, about what your targets shouldn't be. And that's around the target, around the number of bots you release. Why? Um, it's very easy, to it's very easy to automate stuff, and it can become quite addictive for your teams. Um, and so the teasers can be caught up in the, in the concept of constantly rolling stuff out. They lose track of the value. So that's why you need to have a value target attached to it. Um, the second thing you need to do in terms of important is to assign accountability for this program. You need a single owner accountable for delivery or a single throat to choke. Um, has to be someone's day job to ensure this is successful. Um, and the last point is around the right partner to help you establish and scale your program. A lot of programs, as Michelle mentioned, get to a point in volume and then they just start to drift along. Um, a partner helps you move from a tactical program to a strategic one. And, and by the way, this is not about creating a dependency on your partner. Uh, Organisations do need to cut the cord and the more mature ones cut the cord quickly. And the UiPath platform, for example, is a perfect enabler that creates that ability to be more self-sufficient. Uh, but in, but in the early days, it's how you set yourself up for success to continue to grow a program that's successful over time. And in terms of my last slide here, uh, is about you know what do you need to do to ensure that you're successful on, on an ongoing basis? Um, I keep coming back to this importance of your why, and I make this point deliberately, um, because automation is an incredible rallying cry for your organization, where ideas and initiatives deliver successfully and you have great success. On the flip side of that, um, it can be an invitation for people to be scared and not tell you how things actually work. Um, and we've all seen this happen. We've all seen what happens when external consultants come into organizations and ask you, tell me how you do your job. And you know, we wouldn't be human if we were suspicious of what they're asking. And you know, a lot of teams um, don't give us the full information because they think that their jobs may be at risk. Um, so the language around this uh, is absolutely critical to enable that partnership with your people. The second point here, um, the concept of crawl, walk, run is vital. Uh, you should be ambitious, um, but you'll have learnings on the way. 
So aim big, but start small because you will learn things about the maturity of your processes, how well documented your processes are, uh, and your technical, cap technical capabilities that you will need to know before you get to some of the bigger projects. Um, and believe me, what you can do at the end um, compared to how you start will be your, your ambition will grow over time and what you what you will deliver will be far greater than what you imagined would be possible at the start. The third point, uh, the fourth point here actually, um, around technology is always a bit controversial. Um, um, this should not be a technology-led project. Technology are a key partner in your automation journey, but it comes back to what is the crucial enabler, and that's your processes. And who generally owns the processes? Uh, the individual teams where the work gets done. So they need to be accountable for the success of the automation because it's their processes after all, and not the technology teams. Um, once you've automated the process, it needs to be treated like a virtual employee. It needs to be fed and it needs to be watered. Um, so the project team needs to hand it over or the COE hands it over to an in-life owner who's responsible for making sure it continues to work as designed. And this is where a lot of things can go bump because bots like people can have sick days, passwords change, processes change. So you need someone to be there looking after that bot and making sure it's working as it has been designed. And just my last point here, continuing with the theme of IT, you need to work with them around the long-term strategy for automation. Systems need to be replaced over time, but you don't want to make it that for all the great work that automation does, it limits your ability to migrate off legacy tools. IT teams naturally will get scared about automation as it's one more thing that can break that they're held accountable for. So we want to make sure that it's a joint partnership working together rather than something that's imposed on them. So that's my very, very quick summary. Um, I trust you found that interesting. I'll hand back to you, Michelle, and just is there any questions before we hand off to Barat? Great, thank you, Brendan. Um, I'd like to open up the floor and see if anybody has any specific questions for Brendan at the moment. Um, you can take yourself off of mute and I'll just pause here for a moment to see if anybody wants to speak up and ask a question at this moment. And also you can always uh, put something into the chat if you wish and I can ask that as well on your behalf. We're all good. Well, one, I do have one question for you, Brendan. Well, actually two of them. One of them you had talked about a sponsor. You need someone that can sponsor you. Um, who is best to be that sponsor? Is it the CIO, CFO, COO? And is it something that would be a singular business unit or is there a multiple business unit, cross business unit buy-in requirements here? Yeah, so what we found is there's two ways for sponsorship to come through. So when you have a sponsor from an individual business unit, you generally find that the program is scaled within that business unit because it's very difficult to go cross value stream. If you have a sponsor, for example, the CFO, and CFOs are very good sponsors, um, they have a view across the entire organization. The challenge with CFO is they're very much focused on things like costs and revenue, et cetera. So it's about getting that balance right of someone who's got a, a view around the organization but naturally can um, think about all those factors like cost, customer experience, uh, scale and capability um, and retention as well. And every business unit has a slight bent on one of those, uh, but trying to find someone a bit more independent who can look at all of them holistically is your best answer. Um, it really, the answer is a classic, it depends on your organization and how your structures um, set up. We do have one question here from one of the attendees and they're asking, can you explain more why RPA is complex for end-to-end -end automation? Um, I guess the factor is if you look at automating processes and if you look at end-to-end -end automation, it's not one process that's going end-to-end, -end, it's generally a collection of processes that connect into each other. So by definition, it's not impossible, but um, uh, for it to work successfully, you need to create one value, value chain that goes all the way with the connected processes with a high level of maturity and stability in those processes. So by definition, it's a bit harder to do one. You're connecting 5, 10, 20. It's not impossible, but it just, a bit, it just takes a bit more work and a bit more effort. But the rewards are greater as well. So don't certainly be put off by that. Great. Thank you, Brendan. Brath, or actually, we have two more polling questions, don't we, Cass? Um, why don't we put those up right now and get uh, some people's views, please? It'd be good to see where people are across a couple of different dimensions with regards to RPA. 
So this is question number two. Uh, and the question is, what is the primary reason you have or want to move and introduce RPA into your organization? And the options are to reduce operational costs, to free up capacity to do more work, it's really around that organizational or uh, the, uh, the efficiency around your operations, reduce legal or compliance risk, you want to improve your customer experience or even improve your employee engagement. So we'll give that a, a few seconds here if everyone again can use in their mouse and just click on the response that um, best suits your organization and your primary reason as to why you're moving to RPA. Cass, do we have a number of completes that we can show the results now? Fantastic. Wow, 57% are, it's to have that better efficiency, freeing up capacity to do more work, um, which is uh, telling to me that it really is around the, the talent and that people have a lot of things going on and just can't get some of the work finished as a result. So automating some of that will free up some people to do some other types of activities. Brendan and, and Brass, do you have any other comments around this one? The only comment I'd add that I'm, I'm thankful someone, a couple of people put in an employee engagement, it just snuck in there at the end. But in terms of today's work environment, we need to consider that as well because um, the capacity to do more, more work is tied into the ability to retain your employees as well. But, but normal, consistent responses that we've seen. Um, which is great. So the, the best thing is as well is that cost taking cost out isn't the primary driver, which is actually quite pleasing to see. Yeah, agree, agree Brendan. I think uh, if you have free capacity to do more work, the other things that the other options that we see in this question are byproduct, right? If you have free capacity, it automatically reduces operational cost and so that improves the customer experience and it automatically improves employee engagement. Well done. Fantastic. Um, Bharath, I'll pass the, uh, the discussion over to you and you can um, share with everyone UiPath's platform and some of the key differentiators. Thank you. Just checking if uh, you can see my screen. We're good. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Michelle, and, and thanks, Brendan, for that uh, wonderful presentation. Um, I don't think I can beat you there, but I'll try. Uh, but uh, you've given a uh, very good insight into you know why why automate and uh, the contributing factors to that, uh, which um, gives me the opportunity to tell it's time to automate, right? So for the uh, people uh, that joined a little late, who joined a little late, just a quick introduction. My name is Bharat Kanapati. I'm part of UiPath, and I uh, collaborate closely with Assurity to bring uh, UiPath automation platform to my New Zealand customers. So that's my role. So let's go check it out. So um, as an um, enterprise business, uh, you face a lot of pressure from many sources, to name a few. You have um, growth constantly um, you know, pushing you. You have customer expectations, cost pressure, everything, right? New applications that are coming into your business, yet your core priorities um, stay the same. Um, you know, you've got to increase revenue by lowering costs improve customer satisfaction, um, reduce compliance risk, but, but more importantly, point that Brendan touched upon, right? Increase employee engagement. And we, have, we know the meaning of this because we've spent last 18 to 24 months, you know, at our homes managing, juggling between professional demand and personal um, duties as well. It, it, we all know how difficult it is to manage work and personal life when you're working from home. So it makes absolute sense for us to, you know, give more focus on, on increasing employee engagement. But of course, UiPath can help you achieve everything that you see on the screen with more emphasis to increasing employee engagement. So just to give you an um, idea, uh, I wanted to uh, put this slide up. Um, you know, people in this call are from different functionalities, right? So it could be from finance, HR, ID. Um, these are the processes that are ready to automate. You know, it could give you an idea if you're in finance, we have got templates ready for P2P or order to cash. If you're in HR, we have templates ready for payroll. 
um, similar for supply chain, customer services, and contact center and broadband. So if you are kind of thinking where to start, we've got you covered, right? We've got options for you. We can help you start your automation journey if you aren't there. And even if you are there, we can give you some ideas to uh, mature your automation process, right? So let's begin with a simple example of um, you know, how processes were back in the days and how processes are now, right? Do you remember you know, um, when, a, when, a, when a handshake was all it took to hire someone, right? Those are the, those are the days, they're gone now. And, and come 2021, we have at least 10 steps involving six applications before we send an offer to someone and it doesn't stop there, right? Um, so in, in, in a nutshell, businesses are asked to do you know, more with less or uh, with whatever they've got right now. Um, and if you see the numbers there, the average enterprise is supporting 1,200 cloud-based applications at any given time. I've, I've spoken to customers who have more applications, 2,000. So this is uh, for HR. But imagine for some of the complex functionalities like finance, accounts payable, where the templates of invoices and the number of invoices are endless, ID operations, uh, you know, uh, their claims, whatever. So you have new applications, new processes coming into uh, the organization every day. And the only way to basically move forward them is to automate whatever is automatable and beyond so that it gives you a lot of time to focus on your exact mission, you know, not on the peripherals, right? That is the point that I'm trying, trying to drive here. Just to, um, uh, just to give you a, an understanding of, uh, you know, where uh, as an organization, as, a, as an organization, we belong, right? We can cater to any customer of any size. And uh, here are some of the examples that I wanted to bring. Um, you know, we have one of uh, the largest e-commerce players from the United States using UiPath. Um, they're hiring about 100,000 employees a month. They use UiPath to automate some of the, or most of their HR onboarding process. When you go to the other end of the spectrum, um, we, uh, we, we have one of the global financial companies where we have saved up a uh, dollar 500 million. These are num staggering numbers, right? Mind-boggling numbers. And when you come to the accuracy um, of your path automation, like Brendan touched upon, right? So human, there's always some human error. But when you hand over uh, the, the, the mundane, monotonous job, jobs to bots, they simply do it with 100% accuracy and we've proven it time and again. So... Uh, I wanted to just uh, bring this um, up to you that we are an enterprise grade solution with everything secured for you as a package. We can cater to a business of, of any size. Right, let's quickly jump into uh, the UiPath enterprise platform, right? This is the most important part of the discussion because we are the only industry's only end-to-end um, -end automation platform because of the fact that we have products span the entire automation lifecycle. I can see one of the questions, right? Um, into an automation, why is it complex? It is complex. And we are trying to simplify that for you. And through the enterprise platform uh, that we've got. So um, bots, you can see bots um, at the center of the screen, which are, the, which are basically a software that um, runs the automa automation, right? So it basically achieves or, or automate something that you wanted to. But like Brendan told, we are more focused on people, process, and platform. On the outer edge, you see CEO, RPA developers, ID operations, process analysts, and automation users. So we bring people together to the platform where the processes are involved so that you can scale your RPA across the organization. So if you see the interesting point is automation users. I'm an automation user. I'm not a technical person, but I still um, get automations pushed to my laptop. With a single click of a button, I get a, a, a job achieved, which will take 30 minutes or 45 minutes otherwise. So we want to uh, democratize RPA and automation so that everyone in the organization uses it. So if you don't know where to start, we are here to help you with Assurity, forming a COE, or if you don't have a COE, we can get the automation to a place wherever you want it to be. So the point is we involve the people. We strongly believe that automation is as 
successful as the number of people involved in in um, in achieving it and that is why we have the industry's most reliable and only one automation platform and with robust governance capabilities most importantly it is not easy to manage an into an automation life cycle right so it needs um, the manageability and you have to monitor it regularly and you have to control it regularly so we give you a single pane of view um, for automation into an automation so that you can manage monitor and control the entire automation life cycle from a single window you don't need to go elsewhere so if you see the the colorful um, you know wheel we have built manage engage discover so we have products i'm not going to talk about any products in detail but the way we have built our products is is to make sure they interact and communicate with each other seamlessly and also with the underlying applications that that you may be using salesforce or service now or whatever it is so that we have robust governance capabilities and again going back to my um, one of my previous slides you can start from your comfort zone we have industry and function wide heat maps to help if you are in finance you can simply start from um, say uh, uh, say uh, processing an invoice uh, we use document understanding uh, we use um, uh, apps, Action Center to collaborate and give you a proper solution <clears throat> um, um, in an automation platform. So if you are an, um, in onboarding HR, so we can uh, we have tailor-made templates to give you. So in a nutshell, we have the um, heat maps, industry-wide heat maps to help you start at your comfort zone. And more importantly, we are a customer-driven organization. If you see all the new products and product enhancements um, every uh, you know firmware upgrade that we do is based on the feedback that we get our customers from our customers that is why i think we are one of the most successful organizations and one of the fastest growing because when you listen to customers you're pretty much you know bound to be successful and we have a strong presence in new zealand um, on ground presence for you um, to, to, to make your life easier or to give you the necessary support and the last but not the least, we've got um, industries, um, you know, the only open ecosystem platform uh, with rich native integrations with most of the applications that you see. You know, you, you could be using, uh, you know, Azure or AWS or whatever it is, or any cloud application, you name it, we have the integrations for it. And to, to make them, things um, very easy um, and very scalable, we've got Automation Cloud, which is our SaaS offering or you can host the automations or our products on your on-prem, or you can use any of the public cloud or you can go hybrid. So all in all, you know, it is, it is the platform, not the robot that we're talking about. It's not about just a bot that's, that's performing some random automation. It is about the platform. Like Brendan said, what can we be, give back to organizations? How can, you, how can you save time for the whole organization? We're not just talking about personal productivity here. We are talking about scaling your automation across the enterprise. So um, I'm, I'm ready to deep dive into any of the product portfolio based on your interest. We can, uh, we can have one-on-ones um, you know, at a later stage. So um, we are leaders for a reason. You go to any of the survey websites about um, UiPath, you will see UiPath as the number one player simply because of the fact that we innovate based on the customer feedback. If customer wants something, that is our number one priority, and that's why we are we are um, in the in the leaders um, um, quadrant in any of the um, survey or any of the analyst reports that you've got. And uh, the last slide, but not the least. So along with Assurity, uh, we help you get trained. If you are very new to UiPath, right? So Assurity is there to help you form the processes set you up for success but you know uh, we believe in um, you know back in the days when it was a joke um, when you said everyone um, has to have a computer in 1980s right so that's the reality right now and our vision is a board for everyone which will be reality very soon and that is where we are going so with assurity we will help you set up everything that you need in terms of trainings and in terms of uh, what you need. But once you go to that mature state, you want every one of your associates to get trained 
go to academy.uipath.com. You have free online trainings available uh, for every product portfolio that you have. And it, it, there is persona-based trainings as well there. So yeah, there we go. And this is um, a short, and I think it's a sweet presentation of what UiPath platform can offer. And back to you, Mr. Dinkin. Thank you. Great, thank you, Bharath. I really do appreciate you joining us for this session and being able to um, share your platform and how it's able to support businesses on their automation journey. Um, I will be opening up the floor here in a moment. We do have a couple of questions in the chat um, section here that I'd like to, to uh, bring to Brendan and Barath and get some of their, their viewpoints. And then I'll open up the floor to see if anybody else has any questions or keep putting them into chat and I will ask them on your behalf. Um, one of the questions is, Brendan, you had mentioned that from an RPA perspective, IT or the IT department is probably not the best place to be driving it. But there's a lot of dependencies here. There's integration requirements, there's information security, there's dependency across other technologies for that particular business process. So the question is really, when should the IT team get involved? Is it from day one or is it later in the process? Yeah, so, so great question. Look, the answer is you cannot do this without the support of your IT team. And they need to be with you, not on day one, you know, day minus T minus 60. They need to be there with your thinking along the way um, because there's lots of technical choices you need to make along the way as well. So, um, you know, when we say it's about ownership, it's about ownership from the business in terms of accountable for the actions, in terms of the, 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 what the program delivers. IT is still responsible for providing the infrastructure, working with you to provide the best solution and giving you access to the data sources as well because without the data sources in a reliable way, you're going nowhere. So hand in hand from day one, even with the planning, uh, but ownership in terms of the person who's accountable at the front of the exec or whatever, it should not be IT. Great, thank you. Um, another question here, and this is for you, Bharath, and I know you've also got some of your team here as well. So um, feel free to bring whoever you need into it or, or hearing various people here in New Zealand. And the question is, what are the major differences between Microsoft's Power Automate and the UiPath solution? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, so I'll, I'll give a, a couple of points and I have Anthony from my team who can also uh, you know, add a few more. But um, uh, look, I, I've already highlighted uh, the uh, specific UI path advantages that we've got in the presentation. To to give you more, uh, to give to to repeat, you've got the industry's only end to end platform, which some of our competitors, or none of our competitors have. And the and point number two is we have the industry's best user interface for automation, right? So. So that's where you have uh, um, the possibility of automate, automating any complex processes in any application, browser or virtual um, environment. And the more, important, uh, more importantly, with UiPath, humans and bots can work together on the same machine at the same time. Elsewhere, the robot takes over the machine, which means, again, you know, going back to Squire one with less productivity. And um, like I said in the, in the presentation, our platform is an op open ecosystem. We build robust, rich integrations with all the technologies that, that our customers use today, including not only Microsoft, but other, other systems like Salesforce, Google, AWS, Service Nova, et cetera. And our platform is flexible to deploy and use on-premise in your cloud provider of choice, right? So these are some of the specific you know, uh, differences. And again, you know, not to mention the robust um, governance capabilities, you have visibility, control over your automation initiative across the enterprises. It's not a personal productivity tool that we are talking about here. So it's, it's an enterprise grade, highly scalable tool. So these are the specific differences. And Anthony can add uh, a few more points um, if he has any. You, you've covered a lot of uh, good ones there, Barath. Um, certainly the strength of the platform as a whole is one of the major benefits of UiPath. Um, I'd, I'd also talk about uh, the governance and being able to manage and control the automation when you start deploying at scale. Um, you start providing a robot for every person, for example, and you want to manage the automation that's deployed to those users. Our governance capabilities are very strong there. 
and as organisations mature, they start um, providing the capability for business users to create their own automation. But that also comes with some risk where you need some governance and control over that as well. So you might want to control the applications that they can automate or the URLs that they can access. You want to enforce some best practices or standards. Uh, you can do that with our automation ops capability. Um, some other sort of key things that uh, we're very strong in, in the orchestration, enabling you to deploy automation at scale. So as you start rolling automation out to all of your users, you're going to need a platform that allows you to do that easily, to manage the versions of the robots, to manage the versions of the process, to have auditability, an audit trail of what's happening, to detect what automations are being used, if there are any problems there. I think another one too is ensuring a really high quality of service for your automation. And a key capability for that is testing, being able to test the automations themselves when there's any change, and also to testing the applications that not only your automations depend on, but your business users depend, as, depend on as well. So our platform provides a fully functional testing capability as well as um, business process automation capability there. Absolutely. Um, you brought up an important point, right? So the governance. And I've, I've heard stories uh, about, I wouldn't name the competition, but, um, you know, giving access to people uh, and, and uh, uh, the way they, they can publish the information, the confidential information across the organization, right? That's where governance comes in. You've got to have a solid product with full fully integrated security. Yeah. Thanks, Anthony. Thank you, Bharath and, and Anthony. Really do appreciate your, your insights there. Um, what I'd like to do is just pause for uh, a few seconds here and see if anybody, any of the attendees want to ask their question live. If you, Just re be um, mindful that you're probably on mute if you do want to ask a question. So I'll just pause here and see if anybody wants to jump in. Cass, what we might do is we do have one more polling question. What we might do is as people are starting to gather their questions or thinking about what they've just heard, um, maybe we can do our, our last polling question here. Our last polling question is really around the maturity of your organizational processes. And we have four options here. The first one is um, for your organizational processes, are they highly mature, meaning that they're well-documented? Um, Another one of the options is you have pockets of that maturity with good documentation. Another option is it's all manual, you have no documentation. And the other one is process, what business process? <laughs> so we'll allow you just to have a few seconds to choose the one that best suits your organizational processes um, that you're facing today. Great, thank you. Wow, so 70% said so they've got um, pockets of good documentation. Barathan, Brendan, what does this tell you when you're looking at these responses and attendees? Um, it tells us a couple of things. It says, firstly, your organizations are no different to most other organizations. And in fact, um, the one that's got highly mature and clearly documented, that's an outlier because most companies aren't like that. Um, so well done to you, whoever that is. Um, that's great news for your organization. Makes automation a lot easier when you choose to do automation. Um, but that's the, um, that's the great thing. That's the first step I mentioned around automation is getting them to a consistent level of quality is the first step. And the good thing is only, only you know, 5%, only one has got no process. So the rest of them are, uh, are in a state that they're actually automatable because um, uh, you can talk to people who know what's actually going on. Breath, anything to add there? Yeah, nothing, nothing more. Uh, pockets of maturity with good documentation, again, you know, gives us more opportunity. And you'll be surprised to hear uh, how many more uh, good processes uh, that are there to automate. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. I'm going to put Brendan and Brath here on the spot. I just want to see what is the one thing you want our attendees to take away from each of your um, speaking sessions? 
Brendan, what's the one thing you want people to walk away from or think about when they get back to their desk? Um, um, I guess they're already at their desk, but. <laughs> they're at their desk. Those that are lucky enough to be at work, that's a great thing for them. Um, those of us who are at home, we can think about work stuff. Um, thing is, uh, A, the, the possibilities of automation are endless. So you should be ambitious and what you can do is actually really, really exciting. And where you can end up is a far, uh, is a far greater place and a different place than when you started. Um, so the first thing would be just to observe what's going around your organization. See where, um, see where you've got um, rework going on, see where you've got waste um, happening, see where you've got customer dissatisfaction. Because where you can see those points you go, those are the processes that, um, uh, that would most benefit from doing that because by getting it 100% right, you take away all the noise that happens around processes not working properly. Um, but it all starts with processes. So go and figure out um, how well documented things are and ask questions. Do we understand how things actually work? And once you're there, um, you're a lot more able to start your journey. But the journey will be exciting and it's incredibly exciting and what you can achieve will blow your mind after a couple of years. Thanks, yeah, Brendan. So, so yeah, my, my uh, final thoughts are at UiPath, we aim to accelerate human achievements and eliminate all the mundane, boring, repetitive work that you do on a daily basis. If we can do that, and if we can help you achieve that on your journey, you know, there's nothing like it. So yeah, that's the only takeaway that I would like people to take from the session. Great, thank you, Bharath. And thank you everyone for attending this session. I hope that you walked away with a little bit more knowledge than you had when you walked in into this, uh, in, into this webinar. It's great to see so many people joining in today. Um, and we welcome the opportunity to have a discussion with you. Where are you on your RPA and automation journey and how might Assurity leveraging UiPath platform be able to help you in executing on that? We will be sending out um, some emails and notifications so that you're aware of and get access to the recording of the session, but also to ask you how you found the session. And we do take that information seriously to help us improve our next webinar and sessions that we hold on any day that we're ever able to have them in person. So please give us your feedback. We are very keen to hear from you. And with that, I will let everybody get uh, ready for their next meeting. And again, thank you, my, thank you very much, everyone. And thank you, Brendan, Barath, and Anthony for being part of this session. Really do appreciate you joining us. Thanks, thank you, everyone, and have a good rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.